So in our quest for ultimate health and well-being, we often come across tools that promise to provide relief and comfort. And one such tool that has become increasingly popular is the percussion massager. So are these percussion massagers all that they're cracked up to be, or are they more hype than substance? Let's find out. So if you're unfamiliar with a percussion massager, basically they're little massage guns that look like power drills or little power tools. The whole concept behind them, and I'm gonna turn this one on, is you get a very quick, and rapid pounding of the muscles. And you can use this on really any big muscle bodies that you have, any groups of muscles, biceps, shoulders, back muscles, etc. So if you've never used a percussion massager before, they really look like little power tools, like a little power drill. And they are designed, you can put different heads on these little machines, but when you turn it on, it's a very quick movement that basically pounds the muscles. And you can use this on trap muscles, on back muscles, whatever you want. It sounds intense when you use it. The whole idea is kind of to be able to do a massage at home. Now, percussion massagers provide three benefits that I'm a big fan of. So number one is relaxing muscles. So especially with our sedentary posture, sitting at computers all day, inactivity tends to tighten muscles, especially if those muscles are shortened. So getting the percussion gun or the massager into those muscles can actually help to break up some of that scar tissue to loosen those fibers in there uh, and to relax the muscle. Number two is increasing blood flow, and this is super important. Your body is a river, constantly flowing and exchanging nutrients, and it uses blood flow and then extracellular fluid, or the fluid that surrounds this, literally every cell of your body for that to happen. And when we don't have proper movement of water, blood, or whatever in our body, we create stagnation, and this is really bad. It leads to inflammation, stiffness, chronic pain, and we can toxify ourselves. And so this can help with the muscles and getting blood supply to and from the muscles, that's super important to maintain health muscle quality. And the third big benefit is pain relief. So interestingly, pain is a really a brain phenomenon that happens. And if you ever banged your shoulder, your elbow, if you rub it, that does seem to help take pain away. And it actually, this neurologic signals from movement get sent up to the brain and it actually helps turn pain sensors in our brain off. And so the percussion gun can be used to actually help decrease pain. We use this on patients all the time and it can walk in in pain and, and you know, we can get that gun on a certain specific point and uh, you know, instantly it just feels better just from the movement that you're getting and the neurologic input up into the brain. So it can be very beneficial for pain relief as well. Okay, so let's talk about the potential drawbacks of using percussion guns. And the number one is overuse. So just because a little is good doesn't mean more is better. And the same thing holds true for percussion massagers. They're powerful little tools, and sometimes, although it can feel really good on there, spending too much time can actually injure the muscle and actually create the problem that we're actually trying to help. So don't overuse, start light, and add more as your body can take more or you are feeling okay with the amount of time that you've spent. So number two would be incorrect use, meaning using it on things that you shouldn't be using it on, like a bruise. So if you're already bruised, you don't want a percussion gun on the bruise. That's gonna make that worse. If you have a fracture or something like that, you don't wanna use a percussion gun on a fracture. And then using the wrong heads or the different attachments on the end of that percussion gun on big muscles, a flatter head. If you're working on a trigger point, using a smaller head on that. But you gotta kinda know the differences and know when to use and when not to use them. And so incorrect use can actually lead to injury with these things and so just always be careful and make sure that you know what you're doing when you're using these tools. And the third thing to remember is that the percussion gun is great at home, but it is not necessarily a substitute for things like massage therapy by a professional, maybe chiropractic care or acupuncture or things like that. We still need our professionals to do what they're designed to do. This can help fill in the gaps and you know help you take care of yourself at home, but they are not a replacement. So let's talk about some practical tips and best practices that I like to teach my clients when using a percussion gun at home. So one of the first things is when to use it. I'm a big fan of using this before and after workout. So before using a workout to help warm up the muscles, let's say you're gonna be doing you know leg workout. Well, getting that percussion gun in there and starting to warm those muscles up and get blood supply to those muscles can help prevent injury from the upcoming workout and then afterwards just making sure that you know after a workout you're getting lots of inflammation in those muscles and doing a light percussion gun after the workout can help get that blood flowing into those muscles so that it heals and recovers quicker again prevents future injury and allows actually better muscle tissue quality to be built.
The second tip I have for this is doing this at work, taking breaks. If you can bring a percussion gun massager at work, if you're sitting at a computer and working on your trap muscles even before they get too tight, like at the end of a day, is the best practice. When it's too tight, it's going to be a little bit painful. But if you can use this more of in a preventative way, this can be awesome to uh, utilize or bring into your kind of lifestyle, your home self-care practices uh, that you have. So I would incorporate that throughout the day if you're going to be sitting at a computer for longer periods of time etc. Okay, so what's the best practices for using it? Well, number one, I'm a big fan of that flat head that's on there. So that's going to be the easiest for your muscles. It's going to provide the lowest chance of hurting yourself because the force of the massager is spread out over a bigger surface area. Number two is start light. This is a Hyper Ice, a uh, company Hypervolt, Hyper Ice machine. There's three different speed settings with this. I would always start with the lightest speed setting and the lightest force. You maybe can't hear, but when I get that on there, if I push really hard, that's gonna hurt me. If I start light, I can work my way up just to not overdo it. And you wanna just don't not keep it in a single area, but move it over an area, a bigger surface area to work on that muscle. And the last tip I have is to avoid bony prominence. So if I'm getting up in my chest because it's tight, if I get too close to that bone, if this head of the massage gun, the percussion gun hits that bone, all oh, that's gonna hurt and that can bruise the bone and actually cause more damage. The same thing around the spine. I would be very careful about using this around the spine. You can actually, you know, affect the vertebrae, the alignment, the mobility of the vertebrae, affect nerves. So you don't want it, you wanna work on those muscles around there if they're tight, but I would maybe consult a chiropractor or a massage therapist if you're gonna use this around the spine to make sure that you're using this in the right areas. You're not gonna do anything to hurt that spine. And again, there's lots of bones around there, obviously, uh, and avoiding bony prominence is super important. So overall, I am a big fan of the percussion gun. Um, we have, we use them in the office and I own some at home for personal use. So that should be a testament right there. You wanna make sure you know, as a recap that you're using it correctly, using it in the right areas. And I would get some expert help. We try and guide our patients when using this. We show them how to use it in the office so they can do it themselves at home. They're not the most expensive machine, but they're also not the cheapest. You can find them, you know, this one by Hyper Ice, the Hyper Volt by Hyper Ice is about 150 bucks is what I paid for it. You can find cheaper ones. I've bought in cheaper ones. I've bought in more expensive ones. It really boils down to battery life, I feel like. So I try and get in that mid-range to find one that works. But I'm a big believer in these, and I think using them correctly on the right muscles at the right times, this can really make a difference with the amount of muscle tension that we're experiencing and help to counteract some of the symptoms or the effects of all the sedentary lifestyle that we live nowadays. So I hope this video helps. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Reach out to us if you need to know how to use this or whatever. We'd be happy to help you. Make sure you follow us on all of our social media. And don't forget, take control rather of your health before it takes control of you.